Yo, 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 what's going on guys, what's going on guys, it's your boy Cam Legend and in this video I'm going to be speaking about how to connect. Now this video is inspired by Titch Nart Han, I hope I'm saying his name correctly because I know his face vividly and he's somebody who speaks about Eastern philosophy, Zen, meditation, Buddhism, mindfulness, and however this may not be how people see things in the Western world, this is still connected with the philosophies that are there, such as religion. Because prayer, for example, is just another form of meditation and vice versa. And this book really helped me because it's a practical book. You can, you can pick up any page, you can pull up any page and it will have something that you can do. So it's talking about eating and mindfulness, which can be by putting the phone down and saying grace before eating, which is something that people are familiar with and speaking into the food and giving thanks into the food because most foods are made with water and water holds memory um, this is the deeper aspect to life and this is how you can connect through mindfulness. We also have drinking tea, which is something I do also. I drink green tea every day. I try to not drink uh, heavy caffeinated drinks like uh, uh, coffee because personally this doesn't work out for me in the long run. I may be stimulated in the day, but then I'll, my brain will feel fried in the night or I may have gastric problems also. I, a lot of people may relate. So I've written a few quotes from here and I've also remixed it and sourced it up, um, tailored to me to always know how I can connect because as you connect, you connect with these spiritual energies, the energies that we don't see and this is important because our body is literally a vehicle. Uh, it's a host for spiritual energies. Most of this really is spiritual. A small portion of this is physical. But the physical reality has the, has the ability to make things be perceived as everything is physical and a small amount of this energy is spiritual. But we're gonna get into that as we make as we progress into this video. Here's one uh, quote I've taken from here. Listening to the bell. Set cues in the day to remember, to remember to do some mindful breathing. This one is very, very important to me. I do a lot of work. Sometimes I'm doing spiritual work, consultations. Sometimes I'm making beats. Sometimes I'm editing videos. Sometimes I'm working on websites. Sometimes I'm helping my wife with her business. Now, I've spoken about in previous videos how doing many things actually takes energy away from you by 10%. So you're never having fresh energy um, when, you when you move into different aspects of self doing different things like meditating, working, uh, physical work, spiritual work, consultation, bloody blah, blah. As every time you do this, you lose a, a percentage of energy. So what I do to stay aligned with myself is breathe. I go out. I breathe in. I breathe in positive thoughts. I let out negative thoughts. Okay, and the way I do this is by going out, usually grounding. If I'm not grounded, I'm, I'm indoors on my yoga mat, breathing for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, then I go back to work. By breathing in, you're actually bringing in a life force energy that can help you do what you need to do. Because they speak about the breath in the Eastern philosophies. They also speak about it in Western philosophies, but if you decipher through the words, everything comes from the breath. That's how we live here on earth. If you was to strangle somebody for 20 seconds, they will be out of breath. If somebody was to suffocate underneath the, underneath the um, swimming pool, for example, they will, you know, they will die. 
So everything is, is relied on through the breath. So this is our life force. If we are able to master our meditations, our breathing through pranayama, which is something you can search up if you're not familiar with, by doing these things, it connects us. I'm an extreme kind of guy. So I do pranayama with certain intensive, <laughs> let's just say, intensive actions to allow the energy to go up to my brain because as you do this you'll feel your brain feel warm because you're allowing these energies from your lower state to come and rise up to your higher state and you need to be careful with that also you may get migraine if you're doing intensive things to get this energy to rise up however sorry something's in my eye However, if you just set time aside to breathe, to be mindful, to stay, to stay focused on your purpose, you now have a better concentration on the thing that you're doing. You have your concentration levels will rise up. Your, um, your lower energies, which like to be distracted, will be out of the way. Sorry, subjects in my eye. The, your, the lower self likes to be distracted, in summary. The higher self likes to be concentrated and focused. And the more you focus on the breath, the more focused you'll be on your endeavors. Okay? So, what else have I written here? Prayer. Silent, chanted, meditation. These are all forms. The present moment now <clears throat> so what can you do right now in this physical reality to change something in the future by prayer which is all those forms whichever one tickles you you choose that me personally I do all sometimes I like to be in silence no 432 Hertz no frequencies just pure silence and the reason I like to do this is because I'm able to get better intuitive intuitive guides from ancestors from other energies maybe Tahuti, my art Archangel Uriel Archangel Michael or Archangel Sandolphin if you break down the word sandal you see that there you, you see that word sandal is in Sandolphin and Sandolphin is the lower energy and it's also to do with the feet the feet is Pisces I'm a Pisces so these archangels that we speak about are just speaking about energies that are already inside of us okay so silence allows you to hear yourself clearly 432 Hertz is great listen to other frequencies is great however as you become an adept and you start to learn the ropes of this spiritual reality you then start to be able to manipulate things just with silence because the silence is to do about no thing no thing something that you came from the unmanifested can you tap into the unmanifest to create your reality because if you need vices every time the things you may manifest may not be true to yourself so master silence and even with silence there's energies being spoken to you as I tap into the silence I can hear the birds chirping these are frequencies. The bird speaking or doing its thing keeps the world in harmony. Because as I'm out here in, in nature and there's green everywhere, this green is associated with nature. The bird's chirping is associated with nature. As I make this video, I feel calm. 
because of these external energies. So let's listen to the silence. Let's listen to the silence because within the silence, there's a message. Okay? So, with that being said, our body is a vehicle. If you know about Markar Bar, it's speaking about this invisible tetrahedron which is around us. And mer means information, car means spark of life, and bar is talking about the body. And if we break down this word Markar Bar, we have the word car. And just because it's spelled K-A does not mean it's not talking about C-A-R. Everything that is ancient has been remixed to uh, anthropomorphized um, energies. So now we associate car with a car. A car is also known as a vehicle, but we are a vehicle, vehicle too. Uh, we are a vehicle and host for spirits, positive or negative. Positive spirits likes to get us to our higher self. Negative spirits or AKA demons are uh, energies that like to stay in our stomach. This is where we have the word ab demon, okay? Or bow L. You bow to your stomach and you are what you eat. And we know this physically. And if we're eating GMO foods, we're eating foods that don't help our ascension process, we now become a host for these spirits. This is why it's hard for people to put down sugar, cake, uh, snacks, ice cream, and they don't know their over-reliance on it until they come off it. But if you're able to fast and be spiritually in check with yourself, you now, you now build resilience. This resilience comes from your solar plexus. And this area here is also known as the mind navel. The mind navel is also known as your center of gravity the umbilical cord that is cut, cut off as you're born you are this is your middle point this is your zero point so if you're able to breathe in and focus on this zero point you now expand your energy okay so be aware of the foods you put in your mouth understand that if you put life force into your into your stomach such as vegetables fruits things that have taken energy things that have received energy from the sun because we can think we're eating food that are healthy but if it's gmo and it got its light from an artificial force artificial force aka um a light shining down on it to grow itself this is artificial this doesn't receive light codes aka biophotons from the sun which is an organic source okay so let's eat things that have come from the earth i'm lucky to have bananas around me that have come from the same source that i meditate in okay and this isn't about sun gazing and all of that i'm not speaking about that about that today but just realize that we have an inner sun our solar plexus and a lot of our strength comes from this solar plexus okay and strength is speaking about the four and the five the four being jupiterian energy which is faith and then the five being about martian energy i hope i'm right i'm just consciously remembering what i know okay but master the four and master the five then you get to the nine the nine is the moon when i'm talking about tree of life nine also is how we came here in nine months on average to birth a baby the ninth month of the year virgo virgin mary bethlehem house of bread your stomach okay so let's speak about being connected through chanting so you can pray through silence or you can pray through chanting and as you chant you wake up this sleeping giant inside of you, this dormant DNA inside of you. Everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. And if you're able to chant, some people chant and they cry because they're connecting with this inner energy. So through chanting, 
in prayer, you can access this sleeping giant inside of you. We talk about ancestors a lot. The ancestors are below, for real, but then you also have your own ancestors. That's how you came here, through DNA lineage. And this has been proven, your DNA lineage has scientifically been proven to be inside of you by 15 uh, generations. And I'm pretty sure it's more than that anyway. So by praying, by accessing, by vision, envisioning certain people, your great grandma, your great granddad, you activate this energy. You don't have to be so uh, analytical about it or have a, a, a picture of your grand, grandma, great grandma. Although this is good, you can also tap this right now because it's in your DNA. But it takes chanting, it takes awakening of this sleeping giant to access them. That's the difference. Spiritual work also requires physical work. And sometimes when I'm in, ch in chant mode or when I'm doing my spiritual work, it takes a lot of energy. Sometimes you need to drink some water. Sometimes you need to go on a fast. Sometimes you have to do these things to access this knowledge. Spiritual work is not easy. Just because it's unseen doesn't mean it doesn't require physical work, okay? Meditation. Meditations, there's, all, there's different aspects of meditation. It's not just about being in an Indian lotus position. You can sit down and be in meditation. When you daydream, this is meditation. So actively be in light meditation throughout the day. And then sometimes go into intense, intense meditation or mindful edit meditation, which can just be setting some time out of the day to do certain things okay <clears throat> another thing i've written is collective awakening help others wake up this is something i do and something i need to realize is that i need to help myself firstly if you're a spiritual worker light worker diet, diet um light worker or dark worker remember to check in with yourself firstly by doing the, first, the things that I've mentioned today, you tap in with yourself, you now help others. When you help others, you now become an oversoul. Why? Because people rely on you to bring out content. People rely on you for information. People rely on you to help their ascension process. And this is vital because not only do you help them, you help yourselves. You help the spiritual world. God watches your deeds. My art watches your deeds. But be in check with yourself. That's what I want to say firstly is be in check with yourself before you help others. Because helping others is a Jesus complex. It's a sacrificial complex. And me being Pisces son, I'm very familiar with this sacrificial energy. But what I do know is that I have to save myself first. I also have a family and they require a lot of my attention too. So I have to be a conduit for many people. And meditation is how I, I'm able to do this by setting some time aside for myself. Breathing. Okay. And the last one <clears throat> is sharing our insight and we must learn to speak to ourselves sorry let me start again we must learn to speak out so that our voices and the voices of the spiritual ancestors can be heard offer light to the world full of darkness by speaking out you give courage to others take that first step so i'm aries moon a lot of my emotions are based on taking that first step. A lot, of the things I've, a lot of the things I've done in life, a lot of people never understood. But then as I was able to understand myself, I knew that the reason this was, was because I'm an Aries moon. We lead, we don't follow. 
and we may not have a lot of followers at the time but as the 3d realm starts to merge with the astral realm and the energies that were before it it starts to collide and merge as one and then people understand what you do moving forward so then people say oh you saw this happening before anyone else yeah because i'm an aries moon which is the first house and aries moss is the head pisces is your feet so i'm always connected with the ancestors but i'm always connected with the celestial energies that happen first and different realms of reality so this is it speak your truth as you have courage which is also connected with aries other people will pick up the phone too judgment is something we will never escape judgment by our peers is usually due to people not having enough courage to speak up and have balls to speak up the things that you may do a lot of people see spiritual work as scary because they have a religious mindset and they had, and religion is to them is a um, a lock-off point you know spirituality is a gateway religion is a firewall okay and this is something that is just general a lot of people are scared to speak their truth because of judgment of others pick up the phone today do something help someone behind the scenes do something share knowledge that you don't even have to speak just share the knowledge do something never be scared never be scared so yes if you've liked this video you know what to do peace